Hello, hello, hello. In this worked example, which is called locomotive, we're going to uh, uh, examine uh, both Newton's second law and third law uh, to find out something about the forces that act when the locomotive pulls a boxcar. So here's the problem. We're given uh, the uh, train, the locomotive and the boxcar are resting on some train tracks. And the tracks are exerting a force on the uh, locomotive, on the drive wheel of the mo locomotive in particular. Uh, uh, we'll call that uh, force F sub tracks comma loco, the force exerted by the tracks on the locomotive. And we're told, uh, we're given the X component of that force. It has a value of plus 8.5 times 10 to the fourth Newton. And we also know in this problem the mass of the locomotive and the mass of the boxcar. And we're asked to find the force that the locomotive exerts on the boxcar. So that's the statement of the problem. Now let's dig in. So the first point to talk about is, you know, why does a locomotive drive uh, go forward? Uh, you know, this problem makes it seem like it's going forward be because the track is exerting a forward uh, a force on the uh, on the locomotive that has a uh, component pointing uh, in the forward facing direction. But I hear you cry, isn't it the engine of the locomotive that makes the locomotive move? What, what do the tracks have to do with it? Well, it's a subtle but important point. Uh, of course, in some sense, it, it, it is the engine in the locomotive that's responsible for it going forward. Uh, but really the way to think about what's happening is the engine uh, which is connected to the front wheels of the locomotive, that's responsible for the wheel of the locomotive pushing on the tracks. And then by Newton's third law, it's the tracks are pu pushing back with equal and opposite force on the locomotive. And so in our analysis with Newton's second law, that's the, the sort of force that we're going to focus on. We're going to uh, focus on all the forces that act on the locomotive, and then later on we'll focus on the forces that act on the boxcar. And then one other important point uh, before we uh, get to drawing the free body diagrams is uh, to notice that we're assuming, uh, you know, the boxcar is attached to the locomotive. There's going to be a net force uh, acting on the locomotive, and the locomotive is going to pull the boxcar along. So uh, we're assuming that the boxcar moves along with the locomotive because of this attachment here. And that tells us something very important in this problem in that the accelerations of the locomotive and the boxcar are not independent from one another. Whatever the acceleration of the locomotive is in this problem, the boxcar has got to have the same acceleration because it's attached to the locomotive. So we will make use of this relationship momentarily. So uh, to solve this problem, we're going to, as we said, make use of Newton's second law. Uh, and Newton's second law, if we're going to apply it, say, first to the locomotive, we're going to make use of the fact that the acceleration of the lo locomotive uh, is just uh, proportional to the net force on the locomotive divided by the mass of the locomotive. And uh, so we want to uh, say something about the net force that acts on the locomotive. And that means we want to draw a free body diagram to identify the individual forces that act on the locomotive. And then we can sum those forces uh, to give us the net force that acts on the locomotive. So we're going to draw a free body diagram for the locomotive. And the way we proceed with that is we're going to draw a dot, and that dot represents the locomotive. And then we want to draw arrows that indicate the individual forces that act on the locomotive. Well, one of them is certainly this force that the track exerts on the locomotive. So I'm going to draw my force as an arrow that points in roughly the right direction. And I'm going to label my arrow here F sub TL. That's shorthand for the force that the track exerts on the locomotive. And this uh, F sub TL, that's an example of a contact force. Uh, 
Uh, it's a force that is exerted by virtue of something actually in contact, touching the locomotive. Uh, so to find the contact forces, uh, really, all you really want to do is look at the drawing and say, you know, what is it uh, that's touching um, the uh, the locomotive? Well, the tracks are one thing, and we've identified that force. What else is touching the locomotive? Well, in this drawing, there's only one other thing, and that's uh, basically this uh, attachment to the boxcar. So there's a force uh, that the boxcar is going to exert on the locomotive, and that force is going to be directed horizontally uh, in the negative x direction. So I'm going to draw an arrow emanating from the dot. Uh, and now this arrow is, uh, we're going to label this as F sub boxcar locomotive. And notice our convention here, you know, the subscripts, it's the second of the subscripts that is the thing that's being acted upon and in a free body diagram it should that second subscript should always be an l because we're identifying the forces that act on the locomotive well that's it for the contact forces but there's of course one more force that acts on the locomotive and that's the force of gravity that's the force that the earth exerts on the locomotive and uh, gravity is an example of a force that can act at a distance it doesn't have to be touching uh, you don't have to be touching the earth for the gravitational force of the earth to act on you um so the uh and in physics 107 the only force that we'll deal with that can act at a distance is the is the gravitational force there are other forces in nature which you may know of like the coulomb force that can act at a distance but in physics 107 we'll be primarily uh, interested in the gravitational force. That's the one that we'll deal with mainly, which can act at a distance. So the gravitational force of the Earth on the box, on the locomotive, of course, points downward. And we'll use our notation here. We'll call the gravitational force the force that the Earth exerts on the locomotive. Okay, so now let's do the same thing or a similar thing uh, for the boxcar. We're going to use Newton's second law to identify, uh, um, we're going to apply Newton's second law to the boxcar. We're going to make use of the fact that according to the second law, the acceleration of the boxcar is equal to the net force that acts on the boxcar. divided by the mass of the boxcar. And now we're going to construct the free body diagram for the boxcar. So we're going to draw a little black dot to represent the boxcar. And we want to draw, uh, we want to identify the individual forces that act on the boxcar um, and uh, uh, represent them by arrows uh, em whose tails emanate from that little black dot. So what are the forces that act on the boxcar? Well, for starters, there's the force that the track exerts on the boxcar, and that force is actually going to point vertically upward. If we assume that the boxcar, uh, the wheels uh, roll smoothly on the track, then the track is not going to uh, exert uh, the force that the track exerts is not going to have a horizontal component. Uh, it's just going to be oriented vertically upward, and this is the force exerted by the track on the boxcar. So you know, again, we're looking for these contact forces. So to identify the contact forces, we're just looking for things that are actually touching the boxcar. So the track is one of them and then uh, this connection to the locomotive is clearly the other and the locomotive is going to exert of course a rightward going force on the boxcar so here's our rightward going force exerted on the boxcar and we're going to call that f sub locomotive f sub l b that's the force that the locomotive exerts on the boxcar. And then finally, there is, of course, the force that the gravitational force of the Earth on the boxcar, and that is going to point a straight down. So we'll draw a downward going arrow that looks something like that. And we're going to call that the force that the Earth exerts.
exerts on the box cart. And notice again with our notation here, uh, all of the second subscripts are Bs because we're identifying the forces that act on the box car. Okay, so now uh, it's time to remind ourselves that we had previously argued that the acceleration of the locomotive and the boxcar have got to be the same. And not only that, but we know something else. If you think about it, uh, there's no acceleration in the Y direction for either the locomotive or the boxcar. They are going to remain at Y equals zero, essentially, on the track. So their acceleration is certainly zero. So all of the interesting action in this problem is going to happen in the horizontal direction. If you look at the free body diagrams here in the Y direction, in the vertical direction, uh, whatever the force of the earth is on the boxcar, the tracks are going to exert an equal and opposite force in order to keep the, uh, um, the boxcar uh, on the track. And, uh, and, and the same thing uh, for the locomotive, the vertical component of the force that the track exerts on the locomotive has got to exactly cancel out the uh, gravitational force that the earth exerts on the locomotive. So we're going to focus on what's going on in the horizontal or X direction uh, in analyzing this problem. So according to Newton's second law, if we ask, uh, we're going to, let's first look at the locomotive and we're just going to look at the X component of the acceleration, which we'll call uh, A sub loco sub X. And that's equal to the, according to the second law, uh, the X component of the net force that acts on the locomotive divided by the mass of the locomotive. And to get the net, uh, to get the X components of the forces uh, that act on the locomotive, it's um, the forces that have horizontal components are the force of the track. And we're given that number. We know that F sub TL acts is equal to uh, 8.4 uh, times 10 to the fourth newtons. So we have a uh, force of 8.5 times 10 to the fourth newtons in the positive x direction. And then the force that the boxcar exerts on the locomotive is going to be uh, in the negative, it's going to have a negative x component. So we're going to write this as. Uh, so to get the signs right, we're going to write it. We're going to put an absolute value sign uh, around the force that the boxcar exerts on the locomotive. And uh, that gets the sign right because absolute value sign, this is a positive number. And then we're subtracting that to indicate that the force is pointing in the negative direction. And now we just have to divide by the mass of the locomotive, which is a number that we're given in the problem. So this uh, statement here is a result of applying a Newton's second law to the locomotive. Let's do the same thing with the boxcar. According to Newton's second law, the X component of the boxcar's acceleration is equal to the X component of the net force on the boxcar divided by the mass of the boxcar. And that we can write as that's going to be a positive number. And uh, it, we can write this as the magnitude of the force uh, that the locomotive exerts on the boxcar divided by the mass of the boxcar because there's only one force acting on the boxcar that has a horizontal component. And remember, if you think back to what we're being asked, remember the problem is we're being asked, what is the magnitude of this force? Can we deduce that? Uh, well, we're almost there. There's just a couple of things to notice. One is uh, these two quantities, the magnitude of the force that the locomotive exerts on the boxcar uh, is very simply related to the magnitude of the force that the boxcar exerts on the locomotive, because these two things are, of course, a third law pair by virtue of Newton's third law. They've got to have the same magnitude. So whatever this is, this is the same thing.
And then the next important thing is we know, remember, that the accelerations of the locomotive and the boxcar are identical. So that means that these two quantities have to be equal to one another. So uh, that is good news because that gives us all we need to do to solve the problem. So I'm just going to equate these two quantities where I've taken advantage of the argument that we made that this thing here, F sub magnitude of F sub BL is really just the magnitude of, by the third law, it's got to be the same as the magnitude of F sub, sub LB. So just plug that in here. And now since we're given the mass of the locomotive and the mass of the boxcar, we have a simple equation in which there's really only one unknown, and that one unknown is the thing we were asked to solve. So hallelujah, we are essentially done. It's all over, but the shouting, you just have to plug in the numbers for the mass of the locomotive and the mass of the boxcar and do a little bit of calculation. I will leave it to you to confirm that the magnitude of the force exerted by the locomotive on the boxcar has a numerical value of 3.7 times 10 to the fourth newtons. And uh, it's a lot, long chain of uh, reasoning uh, that it took uh, to get to this point. So I hope uh, you will review this worked example carefully and try to make sure that you understand all of the subtleties of our argument. And that's it for this worked example. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Uh,